For weeks, Zionist activist groups and politicians had maintained that the slogan, from the river to the sea, was an anti-Semitic slogan. The ADL released a statement to that effect in late October. From the river to the sea was a reported slogan that resulted in the Labour MP, Andy MacDonald, being suspended from the party around the same time. Using the phrase from the river to the sea was also one of the reasons cited when the Republican-controlled House of Representatives voted in November to censure Rashida Tlaib, the only Palestinian-American in the United States Congress. The Israeli spokesperson for the current conflict, Elon Levy, who we've also discussed in a previous video, has mentioned he's referred to the slogan as a genocidal call for the ethnic cleansing of Jews from the land of Israel. As if to leave no room for doubt, the White House press secretary has said that the phrase is hurtful and anti-Semitic. And also, we categorically reject applying the term to this conflict. Despite all of this though, can you imagine? Netanyahu would come out to the public and use this exact phrase. This Hebrew pronouncement from Netanyahu would immediately go viral, with many pointing out the glaring irony, the glaring contradiction, that the same phrase which was being called genocidal and anti-Semitic was now being used to deny the creation of a Palestinian state. The work, as you can imagine by now, began immediately to patch up what was becoming quickly a PR disaster. It has been said that the clip we just showed was a mistranslation and instead Netanyahu said that Israel must have security over the entire territory west of the Jordan River. But for all intents and purposes, this essentially means the same thing. And by saying that this is an issue of sovereignty, the clip clearly implied that he believed Israel should be sovereign from the river to the sea implying the erasure of a Palestinian state. This Hebrew blunder reflects a similar dynamic we previously analyzed on this channel when looking at why Israeli soldiers continue filming themselves doing ridiculous things, committing war crimes in Gaza, like the TikTok videos that we have all seen of Israeli soldiers. This Netanyahu speech given in Hebrew is directed towards the Israeli population. It's not for us. Soon after Netanyahu dropped the phrase, the United States president, the president of the United States, Joe Biden, would pick up the phone and call Benjamin Netanyahu for the first time in nearly a month, and later tell the US press that a two-state solution was still possible with Netanyahu. The White House press secretary would flail around when asked about the use of the phrase and attempt to spin Netanyahu's use of the phrase as being the mantra of Hamas. Do you condemn him using that phrase? Uh, look, it, there's, a, there's a connotation with that uh, f phrase. We've talked about this before. Um, but when, you know, when you use the phrase river to the sea, it, it speaks basically to the mantra of Hamas. Biden's reaction though would put pressure on Benjamin Netanyahu, who at the end of the day has a right wing Zionist base that he needs to please. And so, as the White House was working overtime to patch up Netanyahu's reputation, the Israeli Prime Minister would come out with another Hebrew tweet to make it explicitly clear for anyone who needed clarification that security control of West Jordan was contrary to the idea of a Palestinian state. We can tell that Netanyahu is playing to a right-wing base because convicted terrorist and cabinet member Ben Gvir would come out and say simply that I deny a Palestinian state. That was not enough for Benjamin Netanyahu though, who would further continue to boast that not only was he opposed to a Palestinian state, but he had been responsible for opposing those efforts for years, again in a Hebrew address. Biden has since then sort of disappeared from speaking about Netanyahu's comments. Perhaps someone needs to go and check on the US president. This incident though lays bare just how much the US are prepared to work overtime to cover up for what they must recognize is clearly extreme Israeli propaganda. At the cost of their reputation and the ability to speak about human rights and law globally, the US is at the moment, it seems, doing everything they can to provide the Israelis with all the diplomatic cover that they require to commit or continue 
the genocide on the Gaza Strip. If you like our work and you're a fan of everything that we are doing with regards to the news reporting, then do click the subscribe button down below and share our channel with your friends and your family.